Hey, welcome to the channel. My name is Mike and in this video, I'll be showing you step-by-step -step how to make a beautiful and professional Shopify store. And the things I'll show you in this video could very easily make the difference between a failing store that's costing you money and not earning anything and a wildly successful store. We'll talk about the design elements, things to add to your website for better experience for the users and better conversions, as well as some backend settings to make sure you're ranking on Google and maximizing the potential of your website. So there's a lot to cover, but we're gonna break it down very simply for you in just 15 minutes. So by the end of this video, you really will know everything you need to know about making a Shopify store, regardless of what you're using it for, whether that is drop shipping, selling your own product, selling a digital product, we're gonna show you everything you need to know in this video. So a couple little housekeeping items ahead of time. First of all, if I speak too slowly or too quickly for you, there are playback speed options. Uh, YouTube has them, so it's very easy to do that. Secondly, this is going to be very informationally dense, so I recommend pausing the video frequently and getting out a notebook and writing things down, or you could just follow along and pause the video and, and kind of go along with me step by step. Now, by the way, even though I'm going to show you everything you need to make the website in this video, there is more to a successful store that I talk about later on, and that's going to be like marketing and finding products and, and different things like that, and all of that is in our free course. It's linked down below. Now, I know you've probably heard that before and you think, oh, right, free course, and then I upsell you. We actually have no upsells. Like, I promise it sounds weird, but we don't have any way to even accept credit cards. So at the very least, go on down and check out that link, please. Uh, but with that being said, let's head over to my laptop. We can probably start the clock now. And in about 15 minutes, we will have a website ready to go. So we wanna start off by going to either the link in the top of the description, or you can just type in santralmedia.com slash Shopify. And we recommend using our link because we are official Shopify commerce coaches, uh, which means that we are getting you the best deal possible down there. So right now it's $1 per month for three months. Now that should bring you to a page that looks something like this. We're going to enter our email address and click start free trial. Then we can actually just click skip all on the bottom. We're gonna select our region. And now we can create an account with one of these four options. I'm going to continue with email then it'll validate our account and that will bring us to our Shopify dashboard. Now usually the first thing I like to do is select a plan so we don't have weird barriers as we're building. It's better to just know what your plan is, get that right away, and then you can build your whole website without interruptions. So if we go to select a plan, there are three options. All of them are the same price right now, but eventually they will renew at different monthly rates. So keep in mind, you don't want to click on this one if you don't need that one because that is $299 per month. So for the purposes of this video, I'm going to go with basic. Now, like I said, we have monthly and we have yearly options. I'm just gonna opt for the yearly option right away because you are saving $120 and you're still getting that $1 per month for the first three months. So I am going to confirm that. We're gonna add our business address. And you can see on the right side, even though I selected the annual plan, today we're only paying $1 plus tax. Now we can say no thanks. We can close out of that. And it's going to bring us back to our dashboard. So now on the dashboard, Shopify has a list of nine different tasks. We're gonna do things in a slightly different order. We're gonna start off by adding our first product. So on the left, click on products, click on add products. We're gonna start off with the name of our product. So we're calling this the Aurora Hub. Then we can add a description. So once we added the description, we can go down and add some media. And I have a bunch of photos here. While those are uploading, we can go down and add a price. So we're gonna call this 49, 49.99. Compare at 59. We do charge tax on this product. And Shopify kind of acts as an inventory manager for you as well. So we can add the cost per item and it helps us figure out the margins. So this is 21, uh, 21.50. So we're getting about a 50% margin on there. If you're drop shipping, we don't need to track quantity, but you could track quantity if you wanted to. And you could add a SKU or a barcode. If you have multiple products, that would be a nice thing to add, but I don't, I'm not gonna add that to this one. We can add the physical product weight. And of course, if this was a digital product you're selling, which you are definitely able to do on Shopify, you select digital product there and then we don't have shipping options. Then if we have other variants or sizes, we can add those right here. Uh, I do not have any because this is just a little light right here. So I'm going to delete that. And then of course down here we have the search engine listing. We do want to edit that to make sure that this is ranking on Google and that it actually makes sense. So to kind of show you right there what it's going to look like, we don't have a domain yet. That's why this is so ugly with that link. We will edit that in a minute, but we wanna make sure that this makes sense. So the Aurora Hub multifunction wireless speaker, I think that's a good title right there. But the description, it's kind of weird with all the dots down there. So we might want to rewrite this as a full sentence. So I'll say that right there. And then the URL handle, like I said, it's a really ugly URL, but we don't want it to be super long in the end. That's called the URL slug. So we could just call this multifunction. We can call this Aurora 
So we can just call this Aurora Hub. Then going back up, it looks like all of our images loaded. Now we can rearrange the order of these. So we probably want something like this to be first. So we can click and drag that over. And maybe this one will be the second one. We can kind of rearrange these however we want and add or remove them as needed. So you can select them and delete the file if you think you have too many. I like having a lot of photos. People can cycle through and learn more about the product, but we are going to use these throughout the website. I see there's a duplicate there. So let's delete that one. Let's delete that file. And of course we can add product organization, the category up here, if we have categories, product type, vendor, stuff like that. And right now I'm not adding anything to a collection. So now we can say save and we have our first product. So if we go back to products on the left side, you can add other products in here and you can see inventory is all going to be tracked. I'm not tracking it here, but you would see it all right there. And we can keep adding more products until your entire library is there. Now, because I only have one product for this website so far, I'm not going to add collections, but you could go down if you have multiple, for example, like clothing, you can create a collection. And within here, it's a really similar layout, create a title, create a description, you can manually select the products that are going to be in this collection. Uh, and then with each, each product, you'll go and select it, add it to this collection like I showed you before. So now we have our product. Next up, let's start editing our website a little bit. We'll come back to a lot of this stuff later on in the video. But if we click on online store on the bottom, right now we have the theme called Dawn. That's the default one that we get. And I wanna go down and find a different theme. So there's five or six popular ones right here. I wanna pick one that's a little bit different so we can click on visit theme store. There are both paid and free themes. So you wanna make sure you're selecting the most relevant one for your budget. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to go with a free theme. They're a little bit more limiting, but getting started, I like saving the money and kind of bootstrapping. I'll design things more on my own. So whichever one you like, you can click on that and go to view demo store and it'll kind of show you what the website will look like. This one's very photo heavy. That's what I want. A lot of the photos are kind of like uh, text graphics on there. And so I think this one is going to be just perfect. I'm going to click on try theme and it's going to apply it to my store. Now, the number one thing people message me about is when they get to this point, they think they added the theme, but it's not showing up on their website. The reason is because you always have to go down and click on publish in your theme library. So we want origin. That's the one we just got. I'm going to click on publish. And of course, our, our website is still password protected. We're going to keep it like that. And now we can go and click on customize to actually customize and edit our website. And now we can see in the middle, this is our entire website. Right now it doesn't look like much, but we will be editing everything. On the left side, you can see each element listed individually. So we've got like the feature product, this is, that's that entire block. We've got the image banner down there, and we can go down and check out each of these just by hovering. It'll show us what we're looking at. So starting from the very top, the announcement bar, maybe we want to, we don't want to say welcome to our store. We want to either add this as something relevant, like a discount or a promotion, or otherwise just get rid of it altogether. So if I click on the little drop down next to announcement bar, click on welcome to our store, I can change this to whatever I want. And of course we could make that a link as well if we go to a specific product or collection. Let's just link it over to our product right now. We can click on back, now that's working. Then of course there is the header. We will edit the header a little bit later on, but going down within this template, the first thing is rich text. That's just the title right there. Uh, I don't really like that being the top item, so we can simply select that and go down to remove section. Now it's just our first product right away, so this is a lot simpler. Now if we go to featured product, we can actually just click on that and select the product rather than typing everything individually. I'm gonna select this product here and it should auto-populate pretty much everything clearly saves us a lot of time. That's why I like adding the product first and then doing this. And you can see right there, the title of it, the price, the little description, we have to add the description actually, add to cart or buy it now. And so I'm going to select that. We're gonna say select. Now we'll click on back and we can edit things individually. So if we click on title, uh, we can choose the size of that. So medium would be probably a little bit too big there. Let's keep it small. That's kind of a long title. Maybe we'll go back and edit the product title and make that a bit shorter, but we could add other blocks in here as well, just to kind of point it out. If you want to add like a skew, or if you want to add an icon with some text, product rating, things like that, all of it could be added very easily there. So then we have an image banner down below. I like having an image, but maybe instead of that, we wanna have like multiple images or something. So we can always add other sections. If we just hover over the little blue plus, we can click on add section. And this could be quite a few different things. Let's just say we want to have a collage or maybe a slideshow. Let's do a collage. We can show more of this product because this is a one product website. We wanna have a lot of photos of that product. Now I actually just wanna have other images there so we can go and delete the collection and the product and instead just add another image to the right, and we're gonna select an image, go with that one right there, and then add another block, select another image. Now I changed my mind about the name of the product and the, the featured image, so I'm gonna go back and edit that real quick. So if we just go to products, 
click on the product. Of course, we can go down and change the featured photo. I really like this dark one, just a little bit cleaner, and it looks more catching to my eye at least. Now we can go back to online store and click on customize again. So there we go. Now I think that looks way better. The Aurora Hub Beyond Multifunctional. We've got the product right there, pretty self-explanatory. We're gonna add a little description here. Now that's looking really clean. As we go down, of course, we have the collage. Below that, we have an image banner. I don't think we need that many images, so I'll, I'll just delete the image banner. I'm gonna remove that section. Now, I'm sure you're picking up on the pattern. If we wanna edit anything just on the left side, you can hover over it, it shows you what it is. Click on whatever element it is, so the text, we can click on that and actually edit what the text says. Then we can add some more text down here, and then on the bottom, we have subscribe to our mailing list. Uh, I don't actually need that right now, but we can edit the footer a little bit later. And so I think you get the idea of how we can actually go about editing this. I'm gonna leave it as this for now, but before we get off of here, one of the most important things you can do is go and check out what it's going to look like on mobile. Depending on where you're running ads, most people don't really think about this. They plan on running ads on social media, and where do most people use social media most of the time? on their phone. So there's, it's very, very likely people will be visiting this website from their phone a majority of the time. And you wanna make sure you're looking at your website in a mobile view. And if there's anything you don't like, you can always customize it in the mobile editor. And it's going to be a slightly different website on mobile than it is on desktop. So you can have a, really the best of both worlds. So we can go down and check out and make sure everything looks good here. We do have eh, probably a little bit more photos than I would like there, but in general, this is looking pretty solid. I think this is gonna be a good website on mobile as well, especially with what is showing up on the top. So let's go back to the desktop editor. And the next thing I wanna talk about is if we go over to theme settings. Here we can change the colors. I think the colors already work pretty well. Kind of a neutral brown kind of matches that really well. Black on the banner. The colors by default, I kind of lucked out and I think they just look really good as is. But if you wanna change the colors, the logo, everything else, it is on the left side. I am going to start off by adding a logo. So we can add a logo and a favicon. The favicon is going to be what shows up on the top. You can see the little Shopify icon there. So I'm just gonna use this little sun for that. I think that works pretty well. And then for a logo, you can quickly make one in Canva. And of course we can select a logo. Now this is by no means a great logo I'm gonna use, but I just kind of whipped this together in Canva. We're gonna go with this one for now. I still think I'd like that a little bigger, so I might go back to Canva and make that bigger in the future. If we minimize the theme settings, there's other things you can go down here and check out. I recommend going through and optimizing your animations, your buttons. Um, your product cards, things like that. But for the most part, I have what I want. Now we can check out other pages as well. If we click the drop down on the top, you can see individual product pages. So if we go to our default product, that's what this is right here. This is going to be the page for that one. So a lot of photos, the full description, everything is there. We can also check out uh, our, our checkout page. Um, no pun intended there. This is what it's going to look like. A pretty, pretty basic, pretty streamlined checkout page. This is what Shopify usually uses. We can customize all of this on the left side, as you can see with theme settings. If we go down to checkout, we can add a banner or a logo or images and stuff like that. I am going to add the logo. So if we click on logo, let's go and add that again into here. And it should be shop popping up somewhere up at the top. Uh, but of course it is called my store. We're gonna go to settings in a minute and change all of that information, the metadata. We can click on the drop down and see that we have, uh, of course, cart. Let's check out that. Uh, the cart I think looks pretty decent. And of course, we do also have blog posts. Now, I don't have any blog posts yet. We can talk about that later on in the video, but let's save things and let's go back to exit. Now, this is gonna bring us back to our dashboard. We have products, we have our design. Now, I wanna go down to some settings. So if we go down to settings on the very bottom, starting off with these store details, as I said, let's start off by changing the name, the store currency, make sure that's correct, as well as the time zone and the order ID format. Click on save, then go down to payments. This is going to be how people are actually paying us. So we wanna make sure we're setting up the Shopify payments so people can pay with you know, Apple Pay, Google Pay, Discover, all these different cards. So we just click on complete account setup. This kind of walks you through that. We're gonna say submit details. And once you have that all set up, we should have Shopify payments as well as PayPal and Amazon, uh, Amazon Pay as well. We do have to activate Amazon Pay and with any one of these, if you don't like them, uh, you can always just click on manage and then delete them from there. Now, I kind of generally think having as many payment options as possible is better in case somebody doesn't have their credit card with them, but they have PayPal on their phone. It's kind of a nice way to not lose sales. If we go to checkout, we already customized the checkout page. So really the only thing I wanna do down here is add people to our email marketing list. Uh, and they can, it's pre-selected, so they have to deselect it if they don't want to be opted in, so they have to opt out. Then we have shipping and delivery. So depending on where you're shipping, if it's worldwide or just domestic, you can manage all of that right here. So if we click on manage shipping rates, uh, by default, it does have uh, sh domestic shipping zones and international shipping zones. 
You can get rid of any of these. So we can just say delete international. Maybe it's domestic only. And of course, these are the suggested rates right here. So that if somebody has uh, $50 and up, it's free shipping. If it's zero to five pounds and they spent less than $50, it's $4.90. You can make everything free. You can have promotions. You can do things like that. But if we add rate, for example, we could say that we want things to be $0, but let's add conditions. Let's say based on order price. Additionally, you could create other zones. So if we're shipping in the US and let's just say Canada, we could search for Canada and you'll see Canada right there. So we could add Canada. We could add all the provinces there. Um, and uh, we could say done if you want to have Canada in there as well. Right now, there's no rates. Customer zones won't be able to check out because we didn't add the rates. So we have to go and add the rates right now and we can choose uh, the rate individually like that. So we could just say, no matter what, $4.99 for shipping, whatever, I'm gonna say done. Now this is being converted, that's $4.99 Canadian, which is $3.73 US, keep that in mind. Obviously check with your local rules and regulations on taxes, you wanna make sure you're doing that properly. And then of course, domains. Now we don't have a domain right now, it's bb032b dot whatever, like we don't want that. So we wanna get our own domain. Uh, you can buy them somewhere else and you can connect them or you can buy them through Shopify. I usually just go through Shopify. It saves the, the effort of, you know, you don't have to go and like point your domains. So super easy to do it right here. We're just gonna go to Aurora Hub, the aurorahub.com is $15 per year and it is available. I'm gonna buy that right now. Then you can go to your email and verify the information just by clicking on the link. Now I did verify it. Sometimes it takes a minute for that to actually go away. And of course, I wanna go down and point out the policies. Now Shopify does this really cool thing where they allow you to use templates for the policy. So if we go down here, we can create from template, create from template, uh, the terms of service, privacy, things like that. Obviously read this, cause this is what you're saying is your policy, but it's nice that Shopify kind of rewrites it and gives you a general head start here. Then you can add in like your own shipping policy and return policy if you want. Uh, but for now, that's pretty much what I'm gonna go with. So we're gonna save all of that. And we can add that to the footer as well. So let's close out of settings. Let's go to online store, click on navigation. And from here, the footer menu, we're gonna click on footer menu and we can add some items to the footer menu. So I'm going to add a link to, uh, let's see, policies. We wanna add privacy policy. We're gonna add that one. We can add a refund policy and of course, terms of service. We can save the menu and now that will be on our footer. If we go back to the navigation menu, we also have the main menu on top. So if I click on that, we don't actually need the catalog. I'm going to delete that. So we can delete that and we can add another item. And this is actually just going to be our product, our main product. In case somebody wants to buy it, it's always going to be on the top, the header. So no matter what page, any blog, anything like that, they can always find our product and go and buy that. And you can rearrange these as well. So I'll move this up a little bit right in the middle save menu. And now I'd say it's probably time to remove the password. So there's a banner everywhere that keeps saying password. You can go to online store, go down to preferences. And right now we do have a password. So nobody can go and buy anything on our store. That's what you do when you're building the store. But now that it's ready, we can deselect that. So we no longer have a password. We can save it. And now our website should be ready to go. All right. So this is my favorite part. We have pretty much everything done. If we go down to online store, we can click on the three dots, click on view, and now just in the past couple minutes, we have a full functioning website. So the last thing you wanna do is actually go and do a test order to make sure it works. Uh, there's a way to do that within Shopify, but that's pretty much everything I wanna show you in this video. Of course, like I said, the next step is to go down to the link in the description uh, and we have a full free course, like genuinely free. You don't have to pay anything for the course and it'll go in detail into the marketing, uh, a lot of different things you can do with finding and sourcing products, different aspects of it. So this video is meant to teach you how to make the website, how to make the Shopify store uh, in just about 15 minutes or so. I'm not sure how long this actually ended up being, but regardless, if you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing, and then I'll head on down there and I'll see you over on the course.